Shaquille having made a mess at the start is coming out brilliantly, an extraordinary win. In the Commonwealth Cup, Shaquille and Oshin Murphy for Julie Camacho. And they're off. Wise Eagle, restrained, leaving the stalls, always held up. Nate the Great in a noseband going forward with El Habib in the early stages of this Longines Cigaro stakes. Close up now and moving forward is Rajinsky, who led the way at Nottingham last time out. Rajinsky from El Habib. Then Nate the Great, True Shan and Coltrane, the old rivals, are fourth and fifth, and Wise Eagle at the back of the field. So Rajinsky and Harry Davis in the orange jacket leading to Nate the Great in the nose when El Habib on the inside under Andrea Atzani, followed by Trushan and Holly Doyle defending an unbeaten record at Ascot. Then Coltrane, Royal Ascot winner last season, won the Ascot stakes on the outside there of Wise Eagle, who's won 10 times in the last couple of years and has gone up about 40 pounds in the handicapper's ratings. A remarkable horse. Running right-handed now inside the final mile and a half. And Rajinsky leading them on the descent towards Swinley Bottom. By length to Nate the Great in second, El Habib is third, then Trushan, Wise Eagle round the inside of Coltrane. Not a fast pace by the look of things as they continue the run downhill towards the final mile and a quarter. And Rajinsky from Nate the Great, the outside of the field, close up, breathing down the leader's neck, followed by El Habib, Trushan and Holly Dor in behind these, followed by Coltrane just behind Trushan, Coltrane's rider Oshin Murphy stalking Trushan and then Wise Eagle. Soon they'll be running right-handed into the lowest point on the race course and uh, running towards the final mile and therefore the halfway stage. And Rajinsky still leading from Nate the Great. It's two by two by two. Rajinsky, Nate the Great. Then Al Habib on the inside of Trushan and Wise Eagle on the inside of Coltrane. About to run uphill, passing the seven furlong marker, and then it's a stiff finish all the way home here. Rajinsky leading the Cigaro field by a half length to Nate the Great in second. El Habib on the inside, Trushen, little keen, but he often is. Then on the inside, Wise Eagle and Coltrane. So now they're heading up the hill on their way back towards the home turn, and Rajinsky still leads the way as they race past the six and head on towards the five, and Trushan just taking off a little. The pace did look very pedestrian and maybe Holly Doyle has had enough of it and is pressing on now on, on True Shan from Nate the Great in second, then Rajinsky, Coltrane behind these. Uh, True Shan probably eager to get on with things and leads the way heading now towards the final half mile. True Shan from Nate the Great on the inside Rajinsky. Coltrane is just in behind them, goes well, followed by Wise Eagle also travels well and Hell Habib on the inside. True Shan by only a half length as they run towards the the corner. It's Trushan inside the three from Nate the Great. Coltrane is peeling out, peeling wider out his Wise Eagle in that red jacket. Then Rajinsky and can Trushan hold off the challenges here. Coltrane coming through now down the outside. Trushan is headed by Coltrane. Coltrane goes on a half length to Trushan. Here's Wise Eagle running a massive race now going in pursuit of Coltrane. They race inside the final furlong. It's Trushan back in third, only third and Coltrane Coltrane has opened right up, four, five lengths clear, and Coltrane, such an improved stayer last season, is getting better all the time and wins the Cigaro. And they're off in the Commonwealth Cup. A very slow start Re uh, rearing was at Shaquille. A, a brilliant beginning from Swing Along. Up there with Little Big Bear. Should have been a ring. The light blue colours is towards the back of the field. Handy is Rumstar and Queen Me, the sheepskin nose fan, followed by Ocean Quest and the XO in the purple. The black and yellow stripes then of Sakir. Marba on the near side over on the left following Little Big Bear is Noble Style. And they're followed by Shaquille who's pulling hard after that slow start with Lazoo and Frankie Dettori following Marban towards the near side as the field head towards halfway in the Commonwealth Cup. Little Big Bear on the outside of the Philly swing along. Queen Me is there. Ocean Quest looking for a way through in company with it should have been a ring and rum star. And coming towards the near side, Lazoo has still got plenty to do. It's swing along. Queen Me, Ocean Quest, Little Big Bear is driven. Shaquille is coming from a, a very difficult position at the back of the field to finish well as they head towards the last furlong. Swing along, 
Little Big Bear, Shaquille running a blind, and then Ocean Quest and Queen Me. Little Big Bear with Shaquille challenging on the attack, the far side. Shaquille having made a mess at the start is coming home brilliantly, an extraordinary win in the Commonwealth Cup. Shaquille and Oshin Murphy for Julie Camacho. And they're off. And Garley on the extreme right in the all blue jacket. Uh, going forward in the pink is Stormcatcher in the hands of Frankie de Tori. And Spirit Catcher is on the left in the orange cap. Also going forward, the Grey Major partnership just behind them from Empire State of Mind. And then. Uh, Behind those, Aku Nadja is being held up, just uh, racing apart now. The two Godolphin representatives, Garley, tracked by Major Partnership. The main group headed by Spirit Catcher from Storm Catcher. And then Mr. Mistopheles close up as well. Empire State of Mind, Aku Nadja, Loughton. And uh, at the back of the field is the Spanish Raider, Rodaballo. Heading on down the straight mile here and entering the final four and a half furlongs now. Garley from Major Partnership for the boys in blue. Down the center, Spirit Catcher from Mr. Mistopheles and Storm Catcher. Empire State of Mind travels well in the blinkers. Aku Najla behind those, Loughton and Rodaballo is held onto by Jamie Spencer. Stretching on now towards the final two and a half furlongs. Uh, Spirit Catcher just hanging a bit in front. On the right, Garley travels well. Chased now by Empire State of Mind. Coming through too is uh, Storm Catcher and Frankie Dottori on the far side. But it's Garley that holds sway from Empire State State of Mind and Stormcatcher. Major partnership behind these from Aku Najla as they run down to the final furlong. Garley with a lead of about a length and a half over Stable Companion. Major partnership. Then Stormcatcher, Empire State of Mind. The Spanish horse, Rodaballo, is running on well with Aku Najla. But Garley, Garley is going to hold them all at bay in genuine fashion. Second, probably major partnership. Stormcatcher, far side. Aku Najla running on near side. Empire State of Mind not far away. And then Rodaballo. Bellow. And they're off. Racing away, six furlongs in front of them for the events at Ascot Christmas Parties. British EBF restricted novice stakes with the nose band misinformation. It's just about the first one to show from the two shades of blue of Western moving up into second place. More towards the inside is our Papa Smurf. Then Ravensbourne ahead of O'Donnell's Orchard in those blue sleeves. More down the centre, Give It Up has certainly gone more prominent now. Havana Smoke a little wider from Give It Up. Then Cachetan in dark blue and pink. Ridden along towards the inside, our Papa Smurf has now dropped out to last of all. Siax is still towards the back with call time and just one more. They're racing towards the final two and a half furlongs and it's Miss Information who leads the way. A length or so to Western in second place. Then Kane give it up who's ridden for more. O'Donnell's Orchard trying to move up into it. Ravensbourne is also under pressure. Siax is trying to thread his way through as they race now down towards the final furlong. Miss Information with a small lead from Siax and Ravensbourne and then Kane West and wider out towards the final half. It's misinformation. Finding plenty of Roisin Murphy from Western and Siax, who's also picking up late in the piece. But it's misinformation to win. Misinformation from Siax. And then Western, Ravensbourne was back in fourth. They were then clear from O'Donnell's Orchard and give it up. And they're off. Racing away, it is seven furlongs in front of them for these juveniles. The Charbonnel Air Walker, British EBF Maiden Stakes. And it's Dim Sons who's the first one to begin. Leading from Kestrel Maroon and Blue Colours. Close up behind in gold and black is Pure Foy. Then Yarbrough in those yellow and purple colours. Not far behind in the royal blue is Olympic Candle. More towards the running rail in pink and light blue is the Ice Phoenix. Blue sleeves of the green jacket is Monkey Island back through. And the big white face of 10 Bob Tony travels in company with Monkey Island. Then a bit wider out, Moyasa, who gets a clear look at them there in the yellow silks and accumulate is currently second to last. The back marker is Wooten's Jewel as they race up now about to go through halfway. It is Dim Sons against the running Ralph and they pushed along Kestrel in second place. Olympic Candle still very much held together. Now just coming under a bit of a drive is Moyasa. Yarbrough's next and then Tim Bob Tony and the Ice Phoenix. Ridden along for a bit more is Pure Foy. Accumulate is trying to find his way through from there as they work inside the final quarter mile. All change now. Olympic Candle produced to lead under Rushi Murphy. Goes on by a couple of lengths to the ridden along dim sums. The Ice Phoenix accumulates now out in the clear and tries to start a bit of a run. 
but they're inside the final furlong and it's Olympic Candle Lees with just over 100 yards to go from Accumulate, then Kestrel and the Ice Phoenix and Olympic Candle gives Hoshi Murphy a double. Olympic Candle the winner from Accumulate in second. The Ice Phoenix may just be in third there from Kestrel and then 10 Bob Tony. And racing. Seven furlongs in front of them for the £20,000 Class 3 bet with Ascot classified stakes in the yellow colours. Saxon King is the first one to show. More down the centre, more towards the stand side. Maroon and White for Kirard, followed through then by Lyndon B. Back towards the centre of the track, Glenn Finham racing quite enthusiastically there. Dark blue sleeves and Cat Froshi Murphy. The turquoise is Sea of Thieves just in behind Glenn Finnan. Royal blue and white then for Taffridge. Settled just behind the gallop there by Jim Crowley. In the grey and green silks, Out of Shadows is further back. In Caraggio in white and black, it's the back marker under Tom Queeley. They're racing soon towards halfway. And it's Saxon King and Ryan Moore who tow the field along. From Kirad in second place and Sean Levy, Glenn Finnan settled down a bit now in third as they work towards the final three. Taffridge continues to be held up just in behind those. Then came Lyndon B, Sea of Thieves, Caraggio trying to make a run towards the left-hand side in white and black and then out of shadows. They're racing towards the final quarter mile. Saxon King looking to control the gallop throughout. Glenn Finnan moving up with menace now. Kirad ridden for more. Out of shadows coming into it and so T Taffridge wider out. They're racing on towards the final furlong. All change now. Glenn Finnan has hit the front. Glenn Finnan goes for home from Taffridge, then Saxon King and the running on out of shadows, but as they head up towards the line, it's a double here for Andrew Boarding, a treble for Oshie Murphy, Glenn Finnan wins, from Taffridge in second, out of shadows third, and Saxon King in fourth. Meta Horse once again, rearing in stall number four, that's it, they're off now, they are racing away, Harry Magnus is very slowly away there from stall number one. Seven furlongs for the Sodexo Live. Handicap stakes. Well into stride was Liberty. She went early to post. She's going to tow them along through the end of the opening furlong and has developed a clear lead as well from Boy Browning those white and red silks. More towards the stand side running well is Starlight Nation. More down the center is De Bruyne in the light blue jacket. Followed then through by Meta Horse in that violet silks with the red sheepskin accoutrement. Behind that one is Kim and Kate and then Gold Marg. Pastiche is next and Enzu Zanna in the red and white. Havana Pews in the orange and the slow to stride out Harry Magnus is the bat marker. They're about to go through halfway then. Liberty under Marco Gianni leads clearly at this point. We're just over three furlongs to go now from De Bruyne. And then came Boy Browning. Starlight Nation and the push along Meta Horse. Kim and Kate, the Black Sleeves and Cap, then Goldmark. Pastiche is trying to move up into it. The head towards the final quarter of a mile. Liberty now joined by Starlight Nation. Two off the fence. De Bruyne ridden for more. It's still well there. Boy Browning's under pressure. Kim and Kate is coming. So T. Susanna deeper out in the red silks. The head down towards the final. Final furlong, it's Starlight Nation, pressed by Zizana between them by Kim and Kate, who's really rattling home. Zizana, Kim and Kate, Starlight Nation, this trio to fight things out. Zizana just edging things now. Zizana, four on the day for Oshie Murphy. Zizana from home in second, Kim and Kate, then Starlight Nation in front of De Bruyne and Goldmark, and then Meta Horse. They're all set and they leave the stalls. A little bit slow into stride is Silla, who's being rousted along and just allowed to drift back is Juana Innes. There's Camarati, Hamden Park and Waxing Gibbous are the first three to show through the first quarter mile. Hurtle Wallop, same colours as Waxing Gibbous, but with the lilac cap, races in fourth with Through the Ages in fifth. At this stage, the market leader, Scenic, is settled one off the running rail, racing in sixth place, just ahead of Silla, in company with Juana Innes, as they've now made the most of the descent and they're heading towards Swinley Bottom. Camerati it is who has the lead and that advantage remains around right about a length or so from Hamden Park on the outside of the red cap of Waxing Gibbous as they prepare to turn at the far end. Hurtle Wallop is in fourth place with Through the Ages and then the pale blue of the market leader Scenic who races in sixth. Silla comes next and Juana Inez, the French import, is at the back of the eight strong field who are led by Camerati. The other winner in the field as they turn now right-handed and begin to climb in the final seven furlongs. Camerati has the lead by a length from Hamden Park with in third waxing Gibbous. Hurtle Wallop comes next ahead of Through the Ages whose partner is Scenic as they dispute fifth place. Two lengths to Silla and no move yet from Juana Inez as they've now reached the halfway stage and they're climbing, climbing steadily from Swinley Bottom. Camerati still has the lead. It's three parts of a length, two in second place, Hamden Park. 
Chase 4 Palm Fair is next. In third place, Waxing Gibbous, just ahead of in fourth place, Hurtle Wallop. Still no change in the play, really. Through the Ages and Scenic are the next two in fifth and sixth. And the last two remain Scylla and Juana Ines as Camarati just tries to up the ante slightly as they approach now the final half mile. Camarati from Hamden Park, nicely positioned on the leader's quarters. In third place is Waxing Gibbous. Scenic's in fifth place, tracking Hurtle Wallop at this stage with Through the Ages as Scylla comes off the bridle. And Juana Ines still held up at the back of the field, still travels OK as Camarati and Hamden Park are the first two to turn for home. Light blue of Scenic up towards the centre of the race course, just being pushed along to get on terms as Hamden Park strikes and goes for home. In second, Waxing Gibbous, Camarate Scenic making hard work of chasing the leader. And then behind these, Juana Inez and Hamden Park for Ashin Murphy has stolen a march here on the market leader, Scenic. The gap between them is five lengths. Juana Inez is running on for a share of the places. But Hamden Park, despite drifting over to the far side, well positioned and Ashin Murphy bounded away. Hamden Park, Floor Scenic beaten again in third place, won it in his. Hurtle Wallop much better this afternoon in fourth, Ed Camarati in fifth. Noel Merler Stakes, sponsored by Troy Asset Management. They leave the stalls, Middle Earth a little bit slow into stride. Climate Friendly is immediately sent forward. Nakib Jim Crowley taking a big tug to try and just get back off the heels of those in front as they approach the first turn. The Darby is also pushing up on the inside. So early on it's Climate Friendly who leads Chess Piece and Nadawi as they turn away, having completed that short run to the bend. Middle Earth is in fourth place, LeMay in the green and white stripes, and held up at the back is Nakib, having just been restrained from that wide out draw. So now they're racing past the mile and a half start, downhill for Climate Friendly, who has the lead on a long rein by in second place Chess Piece in the blue. Racing in third is Nadawi in the blue and orange colours, Middle Earth in the claret jacket ahead of LeMay, and the blue and white of Nakib as they continue to run downhill and the field is separated by four or five lengths as Climate Friendly continues the run towards the final mile and a quarter of the Noel Merler Stakes. Chess Piece is in second place at this stage, racing in third towards the inside is Nadawi. In fourth place is Middle Earth on the outside. Nakib is also one off the rail on the outer of LeMay as they've now completed the descent and they're heading towards the final mile, just beginning this right-hand turn. Change of lead as Chess Piece has moved forward and taken Climate Friendly. Racing in third on the inside is Nadawi of Middle Earth. Quite keen on the outer is Nakib of LeMay as they'll now begin the turn and shortly also begin the climb. So passing the halfway stage shortly and out in the lead it is Chess Piece by over a length from Climate Friendly. Middle Earth has moved into third place, racing on the outside of Nadawi. Then Nakib and LeMay remains the back marker as they turn and now begin the climb towards the final three quarters of a mile. Chess Piece still has the advantage, Climate Friendly three quarters of a length away on the inside. Middle Earth is the one that's travelling widest of all, disputing third place at this stage. On the outside of Nadawi, Nakib passing the five furlong pole is one from the back and LeMay is last of all. It is Chess Piece dictating affairs. Climate Friendly's move one off the rail into second place. Racing in third, then on the inside is Nadawi of Middle Earth. Still no move yet from either LeMay or Naki, both of whom still travel well enough, but they have got about four lengths to find on the leader who remains Chess Piece, who just begins to wind it up as they make their way round the turn. It is Chess Piece who's asked for a little bit more. Climate Friendly and then Middle Earth pulling towards the outside will be Naki in the blue and white, the other way goes LeMay in the green and white stripes. It is Chess Piece who has the lead. Middle Earth coming after the leader. Then LeMay at the moment, Nakib is struggling to pick up. It's Middle Earth and Chess Piece. The adversaries from the ledger who have three lengths in hand over Nakib as Battle is joined with a furlong to go. Middle Earth in the claret jacket on the outside of Chess Piece. They're away from Nakib who can only make third. Middle Earth is drifting to the right hand side. Still has the advantage from Chess Piece. And at the line, it is Middle Earth. Earth, who reverses places from the ledger with chess piece. The pair were clear from the key who hung to the right, but was third.